How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. Joe from... NEPA Beer Reviews. In tow again. Uh, Joe is leaving shortly in a couple days to go to a brewery school. Yes. To learn how to brew beer because he's never done it before and he has no, no idea what he's doing. No. No, not in any way whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Not um, on a big scale. That's sarcasm, by the way. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, so we're going to bang on a couple of reviews before he heads off. And today... Um, we just did a Mirror Mirror from Deschutes. Yes. Side by side of Mirror Mirror from 09 and 2014. The new release. Yeah. 2014. And uh, so I figured I'd break out a bottle of a beer I have had before, but Joe has not. Yes. Um, have, I you had, had, have you I, had any old stocks at all ever? No. No. Uh, the only thing from North Coast that I've had old is Rasputin. Old Rasputin. Of course. That was that was my first review. and I Ever? Just, First review out of the out of the gate. Really? Three days turned twenty one. Reviewed <laughs> old Rasputin. Uh, so it was three days into tasting alcohol for the first time was it exciting for you? Yes, that was very uh, yeah. very exciting. Yeah, because he's never ever no. bought beer underage at any bottle was... shop in the area ever. Shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> North Coast Old Stock. Uh, this is not a um, it's not a secret. I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of their general old North Coast Old Stock line. Um, their barrel aged stuff. You're, um, you're not a huge fan of uh, the old Rasputin, though. Is that no, I'm not. Um, I don't think I'm going to try it again, to be honest with you, because I don't know. Just from hearing people are like, eh, it's not that good. I'll try it again. Like, I'll, I, I mean, have a bottle of it. Every so often I'll try it. The same way I'll just dip my toe in the water to see if it's warm. Just yeah. to check it out again. But Yeah, I mean, I, I might have had it since then, but I don't remember myself having it. Yeah. Um, but, There's. Like, the same way there's Doppelbox, there's like high gravity Doppelbox, and yeah. then there's like kind of thinner, like more traditional way if it's a style Doppelbox, whatever. Um, is that same way with like um, Russian Imperial Stouts? There's like super dry, hoppy ones, and then there's the good ones, which is kind of generic to say, but that is very old generic. Rasputin falls in the drier, hoppier thing where it just doesn't turn me on. You know what I mean? I know exactly. Um, so, yeah, but North Coast makes Old Stock, and Old Stock, to me, is the quick or easiest available facsimile to Thomas Hardy. Okay. That's why I like There's, it. like, when I, when you start, like, when you start getting into, uh, into craft beer, and you, you know, you want to start cellaring beer, there, there seems like there's, there's just certain beers that you almost have to have in your cellar. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, you know, for example, one of them is Bigfoot. From Sierra Nevada, yeah. you know everybody fucking has that in their cellar. Uh, then the other one, the other big one, seems to be Old Stock. It is. You know, like everybody fucking. If you don't have those two beers in your cellar, it's like you can't even fucking call it a beer <laughs> cellar. You know, like you don't have to have two of them at the same time, but like either one of them. Do you have an Old Stock in your cellar? I do not, but I have Bigfoot in my cellar. So you don't have a cellar. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I said, but I actually have neither. I, just, I have neither in my cellar. You want to like? Because I drank on them all. No, but I, I did say like either. I don't have oh, either one of them okay. in your cellar. Okay, you know? well I do. It's have not some both. I do have time. some old stock in there, so I guess I have some kind of cellar. Yeah. Anyway, this is their cellar reserve series, so they're doing the work for us. Nice. Um, it's cellar reserve old stock ale, two thousand eleven, and it's an ale aged in brandy barrel. Okay, so I going never, a little bit of a twist there. Uh, yeah, I have never had a uh, a brandy barrel. Yeah, aged beer. The only other brandy barrel I've ever had, I believe, I could be wrong, but I think J.W. Lee's did a series of barrel aged. I think they did a port wine cask. I think they did a Scotch cask. I think they did a brandy cask. And I actually, wasn't. I'm a huge J.W. Lee's fan. Old ale style, great beer. It's one of my favorites too. But uh, I didn't like that one. But uh, I know there, there's not too many. I, you don't hear about brandy too much, right? as like as opposed to bourbon yeah. and wine. Like bourbon is here, wine is kind of here. Brandy is somewhere. Brandy's like <laughs> down here. I know Cigar City out of Florida. They do a brandy barrel aged Hunapu. Long, uh, wow, craft beer people, please do not kill me. I almost said lager. Fuck. Lager. Lager. Uh, Imperial Stout. Uh, Hunapu Imperial you Stout. You are going to get butchered for that one. Yeah, I really am. Uh, I can feel the emails already. We, everybody says Everybody fucks up everybody. sometimes. 
Not uh, even, that's not even a scrub. I say random just stuff. Just random shit. I'll just spat out, be like, I'll be drinking a beer, and I'll be like, I'll name another beer. I'll be like, so I haven't had blah, blah, blah before, and it'll be not even the beer I'm drinking. Just yeah. like, for some reason, but, something uh, else pops uh, my that's, head. That's the only one. Hunapoo, brandy barrel aged Hunapoo, off the top of my head, is the only one. The only other brandy barrel. You said it was uh, Cigar City. Cigar City. No, what style? Imperial Stout. Imperial Stout. Yeah, it's a huge, a huge Imperial Stout that they do. It's another one of the um, like the big Imperial Stouts that have kind of a day wrapped around them. You know, like Dark Lord. Um, Three Floyds has Dark Lord Day. Uh, Cigar City has like Hunapoo Day. Oh, okay. Where they, they release Hunapoo to the general you. public. But this one is... I've had it before. And I will talk about how whether I like it or not. And I'm going to... Spoiler alert, I kind of like this beer. Um, but we'll talk about it. Um, and it's really good. Label-wise, love the label. I'm slightly biased because I'm an old stock junkie. Mm-hmm. Um, but something, I mean, this is like... No, how does beers, it, does every beer? bottle of old stock have the, uh, the hop? It, the newer ones do. If you look back here, you can see these are the newer ones. Um, this is what the this, older ones look like. Okay, so in 2011, they, they changed, changed that. the label. Yeah. This is the one that I, I know of. Yeah. Like, this is the one that I see all the time. Yeah, in 2010, the age of this. And then the older ones are different color, but they're similar. Like, they're more whiter label. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it has that. Just something about the label just does it for me. Yeah. Um, it doesn't tell you much about the beer. I mean, it's a, it says Old Stock Cellar Reserve, a small batch, limited lease. It's been easy yeah, in brandy um, barrels. Yeah, right here. Uh, it's 15%. 15.5, or 15.2, 15, sorry. 15.2, so it's, yes. it's a sessionable beer. Yes. Um, and, uh, it says, the aging process gives this world-class beer a layer of complexity. Uh, memorable drink that should be enjoyed in, uh, now, what's old as a stock completely complete offer. Regularly. 11 point, wow, it that always changed. 0.9, 0.7, 0.9, 0.7. It varies. It it's varies that, a yeah, little kind bit. Of, so, it floats but the, around 11. So this is getting probably the percentage from the bar- brandy or that's, barrel. So you're going to taste a, a lot of brandy. That's the barrel. Yeah. 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 So you're, there's a lot of brandy going okay. on That here. picked up a lot of alcohol. Yeah. So that's the good stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. I almost have dance. to say what like, like John says about when he always asks me, like, well, do they just like dump liquor into the barrel? <laughs> I'm like, eh, you're that's... not processing correctly. The I'm way. like, first off. I didn't even have to pull it. I'm like, first off, there. that's illegal. <laughs> well, a lot of things are illegal that are awesome, but yeah. anyway. No, but that's that's like. Oh yes. So this is the closest thing, just right like. This is the this cellar is, reserve. I like this or, beer as much as I like Thomas Hardy. Okay, so it's different. It's all about the fuggles. With this beer. Yeah. Nice that I shorted you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Hard to, to see that that was my problem pouring the. Uh, it, it throws me off because it's not a seven fifty; it's a five. Yeah. So but even with pouring, the uh, the mirror mirror uh, pouring into this glass compared to this glass, this glass is a little bit like wider. fatter. It's and this fatter, one's taller. It's stouter. This yeah. one's taller. It's up a little bit more. And it's a little bit narrow. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So I mean, head wise, uh, yeah, it doesn't it's exist really. Like, I mean, he yeah. has a little bit around the edges, but that's because yeah. I did double pour in his. Uh, body wise, it's like the most really, rubious reddish. Yeah. Reddish. There's a really nice um, alcohol sticking to the uh, sticking oh, to the glass. Just pours down, and you'd roll it like this, and you're just like, oh my god, this is the best beer ever. Just a, like you, I love when you can actually like see the yeah, just see the it layers. cascade down and just just like, even mm. like you can see the ring. Yeah. Around the. Uh, the glass and it doesn't go anywhere like you just no it just stays stays. there like what do they call it legs legs yeah yeah Uh, I I consider legs more of the actual foam itself Mm -hmm. sticking to the glass but this could also be considered alcohol legs Uh, let's take a whiff yes Mm. wow speak I know. I mean, it's it, you definitely t- smell the brandy. I get that that brandy. Um, there's also that raisinetti kind of yeah. chocolate raisin dark fruitiness yeah. that you just look for in an aged beer, and that's why this is one of my favorite it's kind beers. Kind of malty, oh, like a little yeah, bit small like malty as well, like just caramel it, kind of toffee. And that's why it's one of my favorite beers, is because it it's aged in brandy bears, but it's also aged. 
So itself. it's you're getting the age and so, the, and the barrel. On when it. did when did this bottle come out? It's two this year, so it's or the end of last year. So end it's a 2011. So it's a 2011 old stock that aged came out for the another end of year. 2002 years. No, but it was aged. it's two years then released, I believe. So 2013 is when it came out. Okay, so they they aged it for. It say on the bottle. What I'm getting from this is that it's a 2011. Uh, do you know when like the regular old stock comes out? I, I don't know. The, the 2011 the comes out in 2011. The 2014 no, like when and when it like what month Ooh, roughly? Uh, the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year, so like January. Yeah, comes out January. Okay, so like January, February, March. Like t- I haven't tracked down 2014 old stock yet. Okay, but I they've been in a wild for. They're, they're, they're out there across somewhere. the country. We're in northeastern Pennsylvania. They come. It's Fort Bragg, um, I believe, Fort Bragg, uh, California. Um, yeah. And uh, like they cre- it creeps across the country. Like like I've seen 2014s on the internet since like February March. Okay. So it comes out earlier, but you don't might not see it for a while on the East Coast. Okay. Um, so you're looking at roughly two years. Mm-hmm. You know, a, maybe a year aging at their facility, and then another year, like, oh, let's put this in the bourbon barrels now, or the brandy barrels now. But that's the thing. I think they actually do two years aging. They release it in early 2013. Okay. So I think it's two so years they, t- they take a They take a percentage of regular old stock, put it in barrels, and then and, like, and, and, and just and let like, it Let's sit. say, f- for the sake of conversation, February 2011, okay. they take old stock. Old stock. Put it in a barrel. Okay. Okay. Let it sit for... From eleven to twelve, then twelve to thirteen, then bottle it and ship it. Okay. So I believe it's two years in, in a cask. I could be wrong, but based on when I remember this actually hitting market, mm. that's when I think it came out. So I think it's actually in house for two years okay. before they actually release it. So it's not like a, a six month barrel thing. Yeah, no that that would make that would kind of make sense because it looks like just from the bottle alone. Uh, you don't see a whole hell of a lot of 500 mil bottles. That's old stocks thing, though. Their big bottles are all no, 500s. But, like, but kind, of, kind of what I'm saying is, like, just in general, uh, you don't see a lot of 500 okay. bottles. It's either, like, 350s or 750s. Yeah. So I'm going to say that this is, like, not a, a limited release, but not, like, a, like, they have enough of it to fill a decent amount of these bottles to let it... Drift, and it's and it's quite pricey too. So it's one of those things where they, I think they know what they're releasing. They release it in a certain amount, but they also price it at a price point that it doesn't fly and go away really quick. So it kind of mm-hmm. sits around for a bit. You know what yeah. I mean? That's not the most well priced beer mm-hmm. for how good it is, but yeah. Yeah. But I think we need to taste it. Taste that sucker. I instantly see why you compare this to Thomas Hardy. It's got that like that raisinetti. A raisinetti, uh, this raisin and chocolate, but it has that. You definitely taste a brandy in it. It's almost like a yeah. core to it, it. It really is like just I mean, toward the like hits your tongue. You have raisinets, more chocolate, kind of maltiness, and then it. Ends with almost like a liqueur, kind of. In a way that we were, what were we talking about? One of the earlier reviews we did, what beer was it? To where the alcohol was a vessel for, the the alcohol evaporation was a vessel for more taste. I forget what it was. I think we were just talking about it with Mirror Mirror. Were we? Yeah. Yeah. It was like there was a specific beer that was like a, a lot of alcohol evaporation to it. That was a delivery system for my flavor, and that's what I. It was get definitely O nine. It was the O nine mirror, mirror. No, it wasn't. The, it, it was. It was a, one of the first ones we ever did when I was doing the reviews in my kitchen. There was a beer um, that was like it's super boozy, but the booze is there for a reason, and it's there to push the, the Avery, the Sam Ale. Yes, it was the Avery Sam Ale. That's what it was. Yeah, it was like that. Bu- that booze is there for a reason. I think. I mean, I, I, I I'm not going to put it in the same class as the Averys. I think they, they brewed that into the beer 
Mm-hmm. Whereas this is a byproduct of the brandy. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I know exactly what you're talking this about. Is, this is 15% alcohol, and like we were saying, like the other ones are 11, so it probably gained a ton of alcohol. The the mirror, yeah, the other, other old stocks are, um, are 11. 11 and change. This is 15 and change, so I mean, so it's this gained, gained a lot. A lot, from, a lot. So there's probably a lot of brandy in there, but. They got a really good batch of barrels. Mm-hmm. Or they didn't take that, um, what do they call that? When you get a barrel and there's a bunch of leftover booze in it, what do they call that? I forget what it is. I'm just spacing on it. Yeah. Uh, like, um, like it's like, I forgot, when I went on a brewery tour at Wire Rocker, they were talking about it and they had a name for it. I forgot what it is. But when you get, like, shipped in, like, you get a bourbon barrel from Wild Turkey or whatever, they'll be, there will be bourbon, be bourbon in it. Yeah, it's just And like usually what they do is they over. pour that out. You know what I mean? And then put that, save that for like, like a brewer's special thing where they actually have their own brewer's, sol- or, or distilled select or whatever. I don't yeah. know what it's called. But maybe instead of just pouring it out, they just threw the beer in it with that extra booze in there and maybe that, you know, I don't know. It could, it's, it's already in there. It's yeah. not like, you're not, that could almost be like kind of a, a bypass of that adding liquor straight to the beer. You know, yeah. you're putting it into a barrel after a certain point, there's not too much usable stuff left in there. I mean, I, I've gotten barrels. All the, the bourbon barrels that I have, they came from Weyerbacher, and they still had stuff left in each one of them. Uh, and it's just, it's not usable. There's nothing usable left in there. It's like bits of char, because the inside of the bourbon barrels are charred. It's like bits of wood and like just kind of dregs and stuff. It's nothing, nothing that can you actually like filter out. Okay. So after a while, like you could filter up to a, I think a point, or at least just from looking at it, you can filter up to a point. But after a while, it's just gonna be like, it's not. You're just gonna write that bit off. You know? Yeah, the only only critique I have of this big time is it is the booziness. Like I wish it was just dialed back just a tiny tiny bit. That would be the only thing. It's a little bit. Um when I first sipped it, I got a big like alcohol burn. Not super bad, not like not brewery, like Black Tuesday kind mm-hmm. of yeah. alcohol burn where my lips are burning and everything is just alcohol. Um I talked about that in my mm-hmm. interview with uh, with Ryan, um, but it I did get acclimated to it. So that after it was just that kind of surprise, like oh this is barrel aged. Yeah, and it's like all right, fuck, we're used to it now. Yeah, because when you're so, having a new beer, yeah, you don't know what to expect. So yeah, like, when it's so but like now that that last sip, I got no alcohol burn. Um, I just got to actually taste like what's in the glass as opposed to just getting it. It wasn't cut off super quick, but it was cut off at a point once that alcohol started to kick in. And it's one of my favorite recent beers. If I was going to rate this, I'll rate it. But this is up there for me. This is like a uh, low to mid-90s. It's probably like a 94, mm-hmm. 95 for me as far as beer goes. Uh, that's where I would rate it. I mean, as, I'm an old, but I'm biased. I mean, old stock. Even bad old stocks. Old stock made a bad year. 2012, something about 2012 old stock just didn't jive. Now with a couple of years on it, it's Probably settled better. in and it's much better. But I don't know what they did. But 2012 is a little bit wonky. Yeah. But um, in general, it's just I mean it's in my hall of fame as far as beers go. So I'd I'd give it like a, a low to mid 90s as far as me. What would you put it at? Um, uh, I mean I there's there's nothing that I can oh. really compare this to as opposed to like Thomas Hardy uh, so like I mean I, I'd have to give this like like A A minus range yeah. um, it's like it's not it it's outside the realm of of barley wine you know it's yes. like into the old ale kind of category and mm-hmm. that's almost like once you hit that it's like a league of its own yeah. You know, like each beer stands out. You know, it's not like, oh, all barley wines are right here. It's like, well, all old bills are like, some of them are over here, and then they're over here, and then they're over here. 
you know, it's like, it's, it's such a different, there's a, you could beer. count the beers that fall into the category in the palm of your hand. Yeah, Like, exactly. it's like, you know what I mean? There was like, J.W. Lee's, Thomas Hardy, um, uh, uh, old, older, old stock, what's another one that would fall, fall the, in that category? Probably not Alesmith, the old ale that I brought up to the, and the tasting one. that one time. I can't think what it is. Something similar to that style. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's kind of pushing it, but I, I might throw an older backwoods bastard into that, maybe. You know what I mean? Where I could see that. I could actually in, see the older backwoods bastard. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good beer. It, and it's a, and it is yeah, it's, I, it's one of my it's my favorite founders beer by far. I mean, blows KBS out of the water, especially with a couple of years on it. You know what I mean? Um, but it's like a, I hear people say like, oh, the the review kind of fucked up on me, uh, but I. People are like, oh, age it like six to eight months. Well, I did it right when it came out, and then I re-reviewed it, to like part two, after aging it for six months. And I'm like, I could see it, but I'm like, eh, I think you need to go longer than six months if you want to see an actual, like, clear difference. You know, so I have like, I wrote a review of an 11. It was an 11 or a 12 backwards bastard that I did. Yeah. I never had it before up until last year, actually. Really? Yeah, for some reason it just slipped through the like, cracks. Like, like, I've heard of it, but I was like, man, I actually, I had this... Just like, watching I, beer reviews, you see, like, there's certain... There's, a, there's trends with beer reviews. It's when, like, certain beers are all reviewed around the same time, like, right when they come out. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are reviewing the exact same beer, so, like... Backwoods Bastard starts popping up on a lot of channels about right when it comes out. So, like, that was another one. Like, oh, look out for this beer. And I'm like, all right, I kind of want to try this. I found it. John I just bought a four-pack of it. John got it in. I got it the day that he... I was, like, the first four-pack gone. Yeah. He's like, we just got Backwoods Bastard. And I'm like, four-pack right now. And I bought it, and I stuck a couple in the cellar. And I have two or three more of this past year's. Okay. Um, so, like, I wanted to, I was I was going to write, like, almost do a vertical, but r- writing each review. You know? Okay. Um, and I, I did one, and then I haven't done the others yet. Um, just because, like, some of the... The way the founders works is some of their bottles don't actually have a, a date on them. Okay. Like, say you have a four pack of founders, maybe one or two actually has the date on it. Well, if you buy the single bottle, there's a fifty percent chance that you're buying the one without the date. Yeah. So you then have to remember when did I get this beer? Yeah. Or you, know, you can just write it on the bottle. Or you could just write it on the bottle. But I never I do that. Though. Yeah. So I, I honestly I never. <laughs> Like, that's an option, but I never remember to do that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, fuck. When did I buy this bottle? I think this is the the, tw- the 2012. So, like, those two. The 2012 and the 2011 backwards bastard. I'm like, you still for the dustier one. Exactly. I'm like, I'm pretty sure the non-labeled one is the 2011. But this year's uh, was just the black cap that was on the oh, okay. 2014. It wasn't the founder's cap. So like, All right. See, I it's not that I couldn't get it. It's just I, I, I honestly dismiss founders. Like it's it was one of those things where I was like I didn't want to be bothered with dealing with founders in any way whatsoever. Um, I want to try some of their backstage series, backstage to, like their bigger bottles that are usually all bourbon barrel aged. And I was in D.C. and on I got to try their uh, Doom. Which was their bourbon barrel aged IPA, because there was a stretch of time where people thought like, oh, let's put a fucking IPA into a bourbon barrel and see what the hell happens. Thank you, Stone, for that one. Uh, <laughs> so they they released this. It was a it was one of their IPAs that they just tossed into a bourbon barrel. It was it was okay, but it was really confusing. It was like a really light beer. It was not like really light colored beer. Uh, then they just had it tasted like bourbon. I'm like, 
It's not bad, but it's just weird. Weird. You know what I mean? But yeah, my best, uh, I don't know if I told this before, my best old stock story, I think I, I've definitely told you, but I'll, I don't think I've ever told on camera, was my, uh, I told you that when I went to that, went to that restaurant, I told them to put old stock on the side, did I ever tell you that story? Maybe. Well, like, old stock, like I said, is old stock's one of my favorite uh, beers of all time, and I went to this um, restaurant close to northeastern Pennsylvania, it's in Bethlehem, it's called The Mint, and I went down there on a blind date. And I was like... I've definitely not heard this story, then. And, uh, and I, I go there on a blind date, and the date was all right. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. But while during dinner, they had a decent beer list. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had Old Stock on there. 2011 Old Stock. So this is in probably 2011, 12. And I get one, and the bartender is just like, Hey, how do you like this beer? I'm like, actually, I'm like, I love Old Stock. It's like one of my favorite beers of all time. And he's like, oh, he's like... He's like, that's good to know. He's like, we've never had it here before. And I turned to him and I said, actually, I'm like, how much of this do you have? And he's like, well, I think we got a couple cases of it. And I was like, you should really take a couple four packs at least and kind of throw them off to the side. It's like, it's one of the infinitely most sellable beers out there. It gets way better with age. And then he just got left to came back. He's like, oh, I put some on the side and cynical me i'm like yeah whatever guy i'm like you just kind of just tell me what i want to hear yeah and just telling you that and i had my dinner and had the horrible date not it wasn't horrible just whatever and uh went home and then two years later i go um one of my buddy chris me and him go to i went to have a beer spot in jersey which right on the border of jersey and pennsylvania and easton and it just kind of did like a beer run Popping off at a couple bunch of different places, and I, he's like, "Oh, you want to grab something to eat?" I'm like, "Actually, I know a really good restaurant I went to. This place called the Mint." Two years later, we go back in there, and order food, and they're like, "What do you want to drink?" And I'm like, "Actually, I'm like two years ago I was here, and the waiter served me a beer, and I told him I'll put a bunch on the side because it wasn't on a list, and I was like, I told him to put a bunch off to the side because it sellers really well." I'm like, could you look for that for me? And the guy's like, sure. Sure shit. Goes downstairs. And he's like, actually, he's like, yeah. He's like, we have a couple of four packs down there. And I'm like, wow, this guy actually. Took I, I was being cynical thinking, oh, he's just blowing smoke. Mm-hmm. Put him out to the side and I got it. And he didn't even charge me for it. He was like, yeah. He's like, that's pretty cool that you did that. He's like, you just have this one. You know what I mean? I had a 2011 yeah. old stock two years later that I told him to put aside. It was fucking fantastic. You know what I mean? But that was like the, my cool smoke side. Because I was like, I told him to put it aside and the whole time. I'm like, yeah, this guy didn't put anything inside. Like, he just fucking left. He just got, yeah, out, he, of, he got out of eyesight. Yeah, just long enough to come back. back to be like, oh, I did that, so hopefully he gets a better tip. Yeah. You know what I mean? But no, dude put some aside and I did tip well anyway. But uh, yeah, he totally put it aside. And I was just kind of like, I don't know, I got a little giddy over that. Then I was like, ah, that's pretty cool. That you know really what I mean? Cool. And then, uh, yeah, then he drank a bunch of beer and it was awesome. That might have been my best beer intake day of all time. Like, we went, there's this place in Jersey, I get, like, rare beer at, and we just started bopping around the valley, Lehigh Valley. Like, I went to this one bar, I had, like, a Guten Emperor, and I went to this other bar, I got Kuhlenbacher, Eisenbach, and I went to that bar, and they had, like, a freaking old stock. It was just, like, every bar I went to was, like, a stellar, humongous, awesome beer, and I was like, wow, I'm like, I wasn't driving, so. Yeah. Even though the guy I was driving with was matching me on every beer, so it's his problem. But, uh, yeah, that was a good day. Yeah, so, I mean, I would rate it, like I said, like, what did I say, like 94, 95? Yeah. You would give it similar. Like, like AA minus. Yeah, similar. Uh, availability, it's actually really available. Like, I can get yeah, I've here. seen these. I've seen it, like, three or four places just in this area. Yeah, I've seen um, these before. I've just never, I, like, I've never picked up the, the regular yeah. Well, I'm just not for any particular reason. It's just like, I've never. It, yeah, it's just not something you've yeah. ever picked up. I've so just, it's not I've like. never picked it up. Like when I scan an aisle and I see an old stock, I'm like, wah. It's not something you like, yeah. look for. So yeah. uh, yeah. availability wise, it's like an eight. Typically, you can get it. Yeah. Even like regular old stock, it's, it's everywhere. Actually, no. Really? Yeah. I, I haven't I, been able to get a four pack of regular old stock in months. Like I went to our went to our buddy's six pack uh, to go place today or four pack or whatever, 
And he had one bottle of sack. Yeah. I think that's, like, my just, oh, I see it here. Yeah. That's just Other that, that, like, oh, I see it here. Other than that, I have to travel outside the area to get yeah. it. So, But this one's pretty readily available. So I'd give it an 8 on availability scale, and I think the reason why it's available so much is because of how much it costs. Yeah. It's usually between, like, 22 to $20 a bottle for 500 not a 750 that's a little bit rough. That's um, like like what you said. They 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 know this this product. And yeah. Uh, do you think they put it out and make it like a little bit more expensive to know like oh with time it will be better I, or is it like I think it's the opposite. I think they know what they have and I know they've already aged it, so they're pricing for pricing it higher, and it's absolutely priced higher from them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've never found it for like seventeen dollars. It just doesn't come like it's that. not that. Thing. Yeah, it's like it's they're not that. It's coming thing. from the distributor. If you're you're gonna break even if you sell it for twenty bucks a bottle, you know what I mean? It's like one of those beers. So, like, so they know what they have. They know people like it. They know it's a niche high end beer, so they price it accordingly. So, I mean, on a value scale, I'd give it a six. Even though that's a horrible price, the only reason I give it a six is because of how much I like it. It's that correlation between quality and cost. So, yeah. I mean, if it was like a notch or two down, I'd give it like a one. But I like it so much. If this was 20 bucks a bottle, I'd buy it all day. Mm-hmm. At $24 a bottle, it's just... I, my butt pucker is just a tiny bit, what but did I you, still buy it. What did you pay for that one today, if you don't mind me? 26 uh, I think 26. I paid. But I saw it for 24 Earlier at a different place, so I paid a little more at, at one place and okay. a little, you know, could have got it a little less. But it's 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 a beer that you share. It's a beer that you drink yeah. with somebody else. So I mean, even this this big bottle, uh, I mean, at fifteen point two, I'm like really taking my time with it. So this is something you'd want to share between a bunch of people. Yes. You know. Yeah. Typically, you crack it for like. At least two, there. if not four people, and you just kind of sip on it, and then it's yeah. like one of those just higher end good beers. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just love the fact that it, like, there's still, like, like liquor up here. Like, it's still, like, yeah. I'm not even moving stuff around, and it's still, like, sticking to my glass. Anyway, review wise, another one in the books. Joe? With any PA beer reviews? Matt with massive beer reviews. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you didn't enjoy it, go screw yourself. But it's add no on, seriously. And if you like, loved it, hated it, whatever, leave comments in the comment section below. Um, if you'd like to check us out anywhere else on the internet, uh, you can check me out at uh, Massive Beers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Infinitely more available or are active on Instagram, so check us out there. Joe, you can find find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And our website, nepabeerreviews.com. It might be .wordpress.com at this point. Uh, didn't pay for the another year of the You're domain wrong. name. But whatever. That's neither here nor there. Go to Google, uh, type in NEPABeerreviews, yes, and you'll find what you need. You'll find me. Uh, more active on Twitter and Instagram than Facebook. So. Yeah. So, right. another one in the books. So, hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a great beer right now. And hopefully you see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.